Hey, Ray from LoveYourRV.com here again, and today I am going to install myself an IntelliPower 9200 series converter charger for my RV. Now, why would I want to install this one? I already have a converter in my RV. It's located underneath my stove behind the electrical panel there. Um, it's a WFCO 55 amp model, but uh, ever since I've installed my trimetric battery monitor, I, I've discovered that the charging uh, is even worse than I thought with this thing. I always knew it didn't charge the batteries very well, but uh, now I can see with the current going in and out of the batteries exactly how bad it, bad it is, especially when I'm on the generator. You see, we boondock a lot, so unlike in a campground where you have constant power we either have our solar power charging our batteries or I have to hook up my generator and when I'm running my generator I want to get the batteries charged as efficiently as possible so uh, and as well as possible and uh, that uh, charger in there just wasn't cutting it it's located under the, the stove my batteries are way up in my front storage compartment so I have about uh, I'd say there's about 20 feet of, uh, I think, maybe 6 gauge wire, maybe 8, I'm not sure, but it's a pretty thin wire going up there. So, And it also has a maximum voltage output of 13.6 volts, whereas my batteries need at least 14.3 or higher to charge properly. So this is a much better charger. It's a four-stage charging system. Um, so it's... Uh, charge my batteries better so the the battery life will be a lot longer I'll be replacing my batteries not as quickly and it also has a chart what they call a charge wizard and all sorts of things in there won't get too much into that right now we will just show you what's in there Got myself a uh, instruction manual and it also came with this uh, little remote pendant here and on there you can uh, use it to override the automatic charging and do a manual type charging set it to what you want it to be which is nice packed in here pretty good foam get her out there we go okay so there we go it's got a nice big fan on it that's another reason I want to stick my uh, charger <clears throat> up front is that other one the fan runs here in our living area when it's pulling a lot of current through it and it can be kind of annoying listening to the fan especially when it's turning on and off so this one will be well out of the living area Put the cord up there and a couple jacks to hook into the batteries and away we'll go cool so yeah what I'm gonna do is I'll have the cord up front and I'll plug my generator straight into this when I'm boondocking and let it charge my batteries. There we go. I think it weighs about five, six pounds. I picked this up down in Yuma at a place called Al's RV and a pretty good price on it. This is the 60 amp model, PD9260C. It should be pretty good for, I'm charging four uh, golf cart batteries with it. And it was around 270 which you can find it a bit cheaper maybe on Amazon or something like that or on sale but that's a pretty good price for it it's pretty nice if you ever in human looking for RV parts this all it's RVs nice little spot lots of parts in there okay so I'm gonna go up front and install this into my power system up there just so happens I'm boondocking with a, a good friend of mine who does solar installs mobile homestead solar services so he's going to give me a hand he has all some extra bits and pieces of wire nice thick wire he just finished uh, rewiring my bot battery bank for me and installing a catastrophic fuse so while he's here I'm going to take advantage of his his help <laughs> okay let's go is that okay with you Beagle yeah okay there we go so I'm gonna mount it right there under my charge controller and then I'll be able to come straight out into my 12 volt and I'm gonna come down and put in a ground 
lug down there. And I've mounted the little pin and just stuck it straight to the to the converter itself. So we'll get the wiring done and I'll I'll show you how everything works. Okay, there we go. All installed in place. I'll just show you the wiring hookup that it needed. There was of course the pendant which plugs into the data port there. And on this side you've got your AC input and also a ground wire for the chassis of the device goes right to the chassis of the RV. And on the other side we've got two wires coming out, a negative and a positive. I just uh, use their, these are a one gauge wires, that's a little heavier than, than you would need but I happen to have them because I did have them wired for my battery bank but uh, I had my friend Eddie upgrade that to a 2 aught wire, 2 aught gauge wire just recently so I had this so I thought might as well use it, can't, no, no harm in going bigger. So we got the ground or negative wire coming out here and straight down to the chassis which is tied into the, the other chassis ground for the 12 volt systems in the RV. And the other wire is the 12 volt output, positive, and it's going straight into here. This is my new catastrophic fuse, 250 amp kind of final fail safe fuse. It goes straight into my battery bank. So you can see I have very short wires coming out of the, the new uh, the new IntelliPower charger there, so there's no waste in wires. Um, while I'm at it, I'll show you my new uh, battery bank wiring that Eddie did for me. He's a master at putting these together. He builds them himself from wire, puts on the connectors, heat shrink tubing. Awesome. Looks great. So I have, you know, my uh, positive side going right to that fuse and then all the different loads come off of it and over on the other side I have a negative wire going to my shunt like before and I still haven't uh, I just picked up myself a bus bar here so I'll be able to clean that up pretty soon but yeah I'm really happy with that and uh, this morning I tested it out um, excuse a quick pan here you can see we're out in the desert and we're not getting much solar today, I'll tell you. So I woke up this morning, we'd used the batteries quite a bit yesterday, it was cloudy yesterday. And then we watched TV and used our computers and stuff, so we were down, I think I woke up about 12.2 volts on the battery voltage there, so they were quite depleted, so it was a good test. So the first thing I did was fire up my regular uh, converter, the built-in manufacturer's converter and fired it up and I was only getting, after it kind of settled down, I was only getting a charge of 10.6 volts so that was pretty pathetic. So then I fired up the IntelliPower and right away I was getting 27.6 volts and when I went to the little booster and pressed it to uh, go into 14 14.4 volt mode. Suddenly I was up over 40, 40 something amps, so that was awesome. So I let it run like that for about an hour or so and brought my batteries back up to 85% charge or so. Then I turned off the boost mode and, and within an hour or so I was back over 90%. So yeah, I'm super pleased with that. That was great. Maybe I'll just give you a quick demo here of it fire up the generator just hang on okay so the generator is running behind me and I'm just in auto mode I'm at 13.69 so it's just charging in normal mode now it's letting me hit this pendant button over here is hold it so you can hear the generator change as it uh, changed voltage Let's put that back on there it's right here. There we go, 14.47 volts. So you can see that uh, little uh, manual override is nice to have. There, we're back to normal.
my little champion. Well, there we go. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that uh, install and a little bit about that charge controller. Um, I'm sure happy with it. Much, much better upgrade over, over that uh, crappy uh, OEM model. You know, even though you have the solar, you get some days like this and it's uh, pretty useless. So it's nice to have a, a good quality charger for your generator to work with. So until next time, this is Ray, loveyourrv.com. Happy trails, folks. Cheers.